Good evening guys, welcome to Life of Palos. Happy to have you here as always. Uh, tonight's a very special dose of stupid, irresponsible, and in all likelihood, another tragedy in the making. And listen guys, I, in the many years that I've been in this chair, bringing you the good and sometimes the bad word of the automotive and supercar community, uh, we've covered a lot of crazy things. Uh, you know, reckless uh, street takeover events, uh, people doing 200 miles an hour in places that they shouldn't, and a lot of the time, unfortunately, these sorts of incidents uh, lead to loss of life or many people being injured, like we've been covering over the last week that happened in Lincoln, Nebraska, where uh, allegedly, I say allegedly, someone was showing off going almost 90 miles an hour, hit another car, those cars both careened into the crowd, 19 people were injured, I think maybe even 20, and two people lost their lives. So yes, we'll be talking about a new level of stupid uh, in today's episode. Guys, happen to take place in Ohio this time, and and on top of that, we have some other crazy automotive and supercar community news action. So with that, ladies and gentlemen, Beard Nation, welcome to your news of the day. All right, first up tonight, guys, I promised you a new level of stupidity, and we're talking about that right now. Okay, so here's the deal, guys. Um, a lot of really phenomenal automotive and supercar events are run at airports, either a half mile or a full mile speed up, top speed runs. Airports are normally a very fantastic place to run automotive events. You don't have any traffic, you get the entire runway you can hit speeds uh, in a legal way as long as someone is holding the event there uh, but all of these great things that happen at airports they generally happen when the airstrip is closed to planes that apparently was not the case in Medina, Ohio, where two supercar owners, one in a Lamborghini, one in a Ferrari, decided to what appears to be race down an active runway. The Fox 8 I team has uncovered an investigation into cars racing on the runway of the Medina Municipal Airport. Cars were reportedly speeding on the runway even with the airport open for planes to take off and land. And now Medina Police and the Federal Aviation Administration are asking questions, and the I team went off to the office of the company running airport operations. Now on top of the already uh, super dangerous racing on an active runway uh, in supercars, uh, apparently the company involved uh, that was running the airport guys went on record saying we're trying to straighten this out, absolutely. He said he's not sure how the airfield turned into a racetrack, but he also said he's worried about a young worker losing his career over this. Uh, the Fox 8 team decided to press him on that saying, you're worried about somebody losing your, their job, but shouldn't somebody be worried about losing their life over something like that, which he answered with, there was no safety issue involved. Listen guys, I get it. I have some fun cars myself. Uh, never once in the history of my being able to drive that I think it would be a good idea to take my supercar onto an active runway uh, when it was not shut down or part of some actually like legally sanctioned event. And I would say that almost undoubtedly now, now that the FAA is involved in this investigation officially, uh, somebody is gonna be in some serious trouble after they get to the bottom of what exactly happened here. And I would imagine someone's gonna lose more than their career over this, might be facing some serious charges. The FAA does not screw around when it comes to messing up a live runway. Now listen guys, uh, before I get the comments about it in the comment section below, I realize that every once in a while when we talk about people doing stupid things or endangering other people's lives, uh, I sort of morph into internet dad where I'm scolding people for doing stupid things. Um, I realize that the, uh, the the probability of me impacting someone out there and having them think to themselves, you know, Aaron said at one point, don't do this stupid thing is pretty small. Uh, but man, I would hope that this would impact other people to maybe think just two more seconds about doing dumb stuff like this because it doesn't take very much as we saw in Lincoln, Nebraska over the last week in Memorial Day, guys, for people to lose their lives. It takes a split second decision uh, they can end up with many, many people being hurt or killed. And when I see stuff like this, we gotta talk about it, at least for a little bit, to remind people to use a little more common sense. Anyway, thanks to the uh, very uh, amazing individual that sent me this story. Uh, thank you very much. You know who you are. Uh, very much appreciated. You guys feed me all sorts of crazy stories, and we sort of pick through them every day to decide what we're gonna talk about. But enough about the crazy stuff. Let's get on to some more normal supercar news. 
Next up, guys, a bit of a precursor to an episode I would imagine is coming very, very soon, either on Stradman's channel or Amelia Hartford's channel. Guys, we got a very interesting teaser on Amelia Hartford's Instagram account just earlier today, and uh, it's very sort of a well, uh, well captioned, we'll say that. So showing a picture of the interior of the very, very customized Lamborghini Aventador the Stradman has, and that is from Amelia's perspective, saying, if you know, you know, and I think I think we all understand what's happening there. At least people that knew what the interior of Stradman's Aventador looked like. So I would imagine we're gonna see an amazing uh, collaboration of not just uh, the wide body Lamborghini Aventador that Stradman has, but also he has a wide body 458. Uh, I believe Emilia Hartford has her wide body 458, but a different version, the Liberty Walk kit that Stradman used. And I think we're gonna see some amazing shots of those two incredible Liberty Walk kits together, guys. 458 madness, and I would imagine some other stuff too. Make sure to go check it out, guys. I would imagine that episode's coming sometime in the next couple of days. Stradman just posted earlier today a different episode for the Captain Up with Triple F collection, guys. And I would hope that we see it very soon on either one of their channels. So get ready for that, guys. It's going to be a collaboration that's been in the works for a long, long time. I've not seen Amelia Hartford with Stradman for quite a while, if I can remember. Right. Let me know what you guys think about that in the comments below. Next up, guys, a very weird segue into more Stradman and somehow Whistle and Diesel news. Not sure how we ended up here, but there you go. Anyway, a bunch of new Instagram stories from Whistle and Diesel, uh, sort of calling out Stradman to a certain degree. I feel like this is sort of like an annual thing for Whistle and Diesel now. Uh, every once in a while, as you guys will remember, uh, being blocked from Stradman years ago at this point, saying this, showing him searching for Stradman's Instagram account, not being able to find it, and saying, please unblock me, Stradman. I forgive you for being a big dummy, and then just saying, just kidding. Now, if you guys don't remember that entire crazy thing from uh, a couple of years ago at this point, it was the last Last time that I went camping, which I think was like two years ago, that's how I sort of registered time differences in my head, uh, but essentially there were a bunch of like, I would say very coarse humored comments uh, that Whistle and Diesel made on Stradman's post when he wrapped his Bugatti Veyron purple about gouging his eyes out if he ever wrapped his car, that, something like that. Uh, and then eventually some Whistle and Diesel fans made some threats against Stradman's dog, which sort of prompted the blocking eventually. Uh, I can't imagine that he's ever going to unblock Whistle and Diesel at this point. It's not like they sort of need each other. Although I would imagine a collaboration at this point would be very, very cool to the biggest automotive and supercar uh, creators really anywhere at this point. But anyway, thought I'd let you guys know of some very, very tiny drama. Gotta mention Triple F Collection's latest video, guys, called Stradman, Shmi, and the Hamilton Collection help us prep for the event too. If you guys have not seen this video, it is phenomenal. It is all the prep for the monster, a super and hypercar video that Shmi just talked about in one of his latest videos. Uh, Triple F Collection puts on some of the greatest events ever in terms of hyper and supercars, tons of automotive and supercar YouTuber celebrities there as well. You heard just a couple of them right there. Uh, and honestly, guys, Triple F Collection puts out some of the best cinematics really anywhere in automotive YouTube, and they deserve a lot more love. Get over there, check it out, guys, and get ready for the big videos dropping on that very soon. And to round off our day, guys, a very interesting video from Royalty Exotics, Houston Crost. The video is called Where is the Bugatti Veyron Flood Car? Getting the entire sort of big info on that. The entire thing is a commentary a sort of run up for what the Bugatti Veyron Flood uh, Car is going to be like, when we're going to see it, all that kind of jazz. Uh, one of the most sort of historic cars ever to be rebuilt, I think in the history of automotive anything. I don't know anyone who's done quite a hypercar rebuild like Royalty Exotic Cars is doing with that Flood Veyron. Um, there's so much history with that car. So many people know about the initial video and now we're getting a lot more answers in this video. Make sure to check it out guys and do not miss the videos when it actually drops and they start doing a lot of content with that Flood car. And finally guys, a very interesting video commentary from Ed Bolian on the VinWiki channel. It's called, Is a Pagani Huayra BC Really Worth $5 million? Um, I'll say this guys, having seen a Pagani Huayra BC in person, uh, knowing the price tag is around $5 million right now, it is one of the most beautiful cars that I think I've ever seen. The craftsmanship is at a different level, guys, just beyond even most of their hypercar manufacturers out there. Uh, I don't know if I would personally spend $5 million, not that I have that to spend randomly on a Pagani, uh, but Ed Bullion breaks it down and talks about a number of other fantastic hypercars and the owner and sort of how this video came to be. 
super fascinating. I think you guys will really enjoy it. Nice to have on the background if you're doing something else. Check it out, guys. Link for that video in the description below. And folks, that's all I've got for you guys today. Thanks so much for watching. Uh, let me know how you think I'm doing over the last month or so. I'd love to get some feedback. Hit me up on Instagram, follow me there. I use Instagram primarily for DMs with different subscribers. So if you wanna hit me up, if you wanna chat about something, I'll do my best to get back to you whenever I have time. And that's all I got, guys. So have a great day. Make sure to stay safe, sane, and healthy. And uh, yeah, see ya, bye.